Ministries. Dr. Paul, once again, thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. Please visit our website at www.usmlevideos.net. Today I want to talk a few minutes about tarsal tunnel syndrome. Tarsal tunnel syndrome basically it causes pain on the plantar aspect of the foot. Now in the physical examination the most important point is to elicit a tinnel sign. Tinnel sign is uh, just tapping over the posterior tibial nerve and when you tap the posterior tibial nerve there will be reproduction of the pain on plantar aspect. Now these patients also suffer from dysesthesia and numbness on the plantar aspect. The main causes is some obstruction on the posterior tibial nerve and uh, as you know the two lateral branches the medial plantar nerve and the lateral plantar nerve the two terminal branches of the posterior tibial nerve they will be under traction the force that uh, causes these patients to have experienced pain whenever they dorsiflex their foot because the stretching of the posterior tibial nerve. Now let us talk a few minutes about the clinical findings starting with the uh, symptoms and signs. The entrapment of the posterior tibial nerve must be considered in the differential diagnosis of any plantar rear foot pain. So the entrapment, you see, in the median now entrapment here, we have this carpal tunnel syndrome. So its counterpart in the foot is the tarsal tunnel syndrome, the entrapment of the posterior tibial now. Now the inflammation of the tendon that is, that is because of this is also the most important uh, point. The excessive pronation of the foot puts lot of pressure on the flexor digitorum and the maximum muscles. So that causes the parasthesia and that's why when we tap on the posterior tibia now we are actually reproducing the pain and the parasthesia in the so-called tinnels sign. So you should evaluate the patient both in sitting and standing position with the dorsiflexion of the foot. Now Tinnel sign, as I said, is the most important thing you must do in the physical examination because the terminal branches of the medial uh, posterior tibial now, the medial plantar now and the lateral plantar now, both of them uh, supply the plantar aspect of the foot. You can also do electrodiagnostic studies. You can see the narrow conduction velocities along the medial plantar now and the abductor hallucis muscles, the lateral plantar now to the abductor digiti quinti and you don't have to remember all those muscles but the point is in tarsal tunnel syndrome basically the posterior tibial now is under entrapment that entrapment causes the pain and dysesthesia in these patients. Now let us talk about the definitive diagnosis of tarsal tunnel syndrome. There are three things. Number one, clinical history. You need to ask the patient where is exactly the pain and the numbness and if the patient has on the plantar aspect of the foot, that's the number one thing. Number two is uh, physical examination. As I said, tinnel sign is an important thing. Number three, the electrodiagnostic studies. The electrodiagnostic studies should uh, show that entrapment has happened. And as I said, sometimes ganglions and cysts, they cause the entrapment of the posterior tibial nerve. In those cases, you need to do an MRI to see that particular cyst or the ganglion. So those are the most important three things in, the, in making the definitive diagnosis of tarsal tunnel syndrome. If there is no, uh, uh, if any of these three things are absent, you need to suspect it. Now electrodiagnostic studies you need to think about uh, posterior tibial uh, now and uh, do the conduction velocity and th those are the main points in that area. Now coming to treatment. In treatment there are two things. Number one conservative management. How do you manage them conservatively? Number one 
in conservative management is starting them on medications. The best medications are NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, because this is an inflammatory process. So we need to treat that inflammation with NSAIDs. And secondly, it's uh, an entrapment syndrome. You can use an orthotic to relieve the pain. So patients' uh, foot has gone into pronation, so you depronate the foot. Now, also if there is a cyst, aspiration and injection of the ganglion cyst should be done. And also immobilization in a polypropylene air flow. So those are the things you need to do in conservative management. Secondly, the surgical management. In surgical management, you need to help patient to make the diagnosis and uh, to make that decision to go ahead is just relieving the pressure in the entrapment syndrome. The surgeon will uh, put an incision behind the medial malleolus. He opens the compartment and uh, he removes any ganglion cysts or anything that is causing this uh, uh, pressure or the posterior tibial nerve and uh, it's just releasing the pressure and uh, making room for the posterior tibia. That's a surgical treatment. So those are the most important points I want to tell you about tarsal tunnel syndrome. Basically this is pain on the plantar aspect in the distribution of the posterior tibia now that causing pain and dysesthesias. And uh, diagnosis is by clinical history, physical examination, doing tunnels sign and doing electrodiagnostic studies like electromyography, nerve conduction velocity, those are the things. And doing an MRI if there is a suspicion of a cyst or ganglion. And in the treatment, doing conservative treatment using NSAIDs and uh, uh, polypropylene AF4 and also immobilization. And on the other last resort, it is surgical treatment. That's about it. And please visit us at www.usmlevideos.net if you want more information. And uh, also, those of you who are taking USML clinical skills, read the book that is uh, USML Smasher. I released this book, and it's very, very important if you want to pass this examination. Some of these uh, institutions are taking like uh, thousands, like three, four thousand dollars to pass this simple examination. All you need is to know some tricks of the trade. So that's about it. Thank you very much for watching this video.